Right guys, another 36 volt battery sent in by a customer. It is 36 volts, 15.6 amp hours in your standard shoe long down tube case. And what I can see straight off the bat is this has already been opened in the past. Charging port not in place. Key lock is. Just do a quick few tests a second to see if there's any power coming out of here at all. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, quick test. Is there anything at all coming out of this? Uh, the light is terrible. 1.95 volts. Let's just turn the switch on a second. 1.915 regardless whether the switch is on or off. Okay. So I'd be interested to see whether the switch is connected. And just check the charge port a second. One positive, two is negative on the pins. 1.619. So again, not full voltage, regardless of the switch. Okay, let's just open this up a second and have a look inside. Right, as I said, it's already been opened. Um, it's 36 volts, which is kind of strange for one of these. Usually they're 48 volt based. comes in 13 amp hours or 18.4 flavours. Um, so this should be quite interested. What I can see from looking at the internals, the blue wrap is still intact. This around the cells. So I just imagine they haven't been checked for balance, if that's still there. Um, but we'll just whip this off and check. First inclinations is it's just the BMS, if I'm honest. Um, we need to check the cells first to make sure there's at least power in them. Um, but from the symptoms so far, the discharge voltage uh, combined with the charge port voltage, I'm guessing the BMS MOSFETs must have blown. But no need to guess, let's have a quick look. Uh, let see what condition it is inside. Obviously it's been open before. I don't think it's been disturbed too much. He says confidently. So have a look. Okay, so we have Samsung cells. Judging by the colour. So the battery doesn't state what 18650 model cells is using. Um, I am curious though. Let's just remove this a second. Let me take the camera back out because that's not the best of angles. Right. So what we got, a bit of sticky tape, normal stuff. Discharge ports. Let's just free up some space so we can work a second. Uh, let's uh, simplify things, get rid of the base tray. What I'm going to do is remove the discharge side of things, the negative and positive. I'm just going to clip them straight off. There's no need for them to be there, and we're going to be rebrazing it anyway. Let me stick it back together. So, one and two. USB board comes out, so that doesn't need clipping. And then we'll just check the cell, uh, cells for balance. Um, and hopefully, it is nothing major, just a BMS swap out. Which would be nice. Right, USB board out. Usually these suffer from water damage. Um, this one seems to be perfectly fine. So we'll overlook that. Next we've got the on off switch, which didn't seem to be functioning anyway. Which leads me to believe it's the BMS at such faults. So we'll remove that. Take away them. Right. Battery is out. Uh, let's find this BMS and check the balance on the leads. Hide the tail of that under there a second. The BMS on this model is underneath. It's hiding by here. This has been opened before. Hey, they've cut through the blue wrap. 
So they might have checked the balance. Let's see what we got here. Standard BMS, not shielded, no. No, not shielded at all. Okay. Let's see if there is something in this battery in the first place. What we'll do is get the multimeter, check the overall voltage first, and then we'll check the balance. So our last negative down to our first positive. Where is she hiding? There she is. Should give me something. 38.58. Right, the battery's still alive, in a manner of speaking. So that's a good sign, as in all this cells should be fine and they should be balanced. Um, either way, there is something to work with here, so that's a good sign. Uh, I'll be honest, the BMS is not exactly fantastic. Uh, not in the slightest. In fact, I'm not even going to try and measure these pins because they are too small. Let's zoom back in a second. Uh, BMS, micro JST connector, too small to be probing that. So that's not going to be happening. I am going to have to go directly to the cells themselves. All right, left and right panel off. Well, that does is expose our sides so we can get a probe in. And uh, perfectly clean, no rust spots. Okay, next side, perfectly clean, no damage, no rust spots, looking good so far. The cells are not Samsung, they are, are clones. They're pretty much on the same spec as Samsung's, except they're clones. They're 26 Model E type cells. Samsung do do the same 26, or is it 22P model? Either way, this is not them. This is a version of them. Uh, let me see. Model 26E18650 cell. We can work out what the cell values are if we need to, but I don't think it's going to come to that. So, multimeter on the side. What we're going to do is go row from row from top all the way down 13 rows. Check each row to make sure it is exactly matching in voltage down to 100 milliamps. So negative first, first row, let's kick this off, is 3.7. Second row is 3.874. Right there, let's check that first row again. 3.78. And the second row is 3. Point, still within 100 millivolts, that's fine. Row number three, 3.8. Let's do row number four. 3.8, row number 5, 3.8, row number 6, I can see where this is going already, 3.8, number 7, 3.8, number 9, 3.8, number 10, 3.8, cool, we've got a usable pack, um, cells are fine, a pack will charge, BMS does need replacing, now that's in charge of the discharge and charging of the battery itself. Let me just check this BMS. Let me just make sure there's no water damage or anything like that we can just fix quickly. I'm saying that BMS install only takes 20 minutes, so... But anyway, let's just probe it. What we got? Let's take our last positive. 26.7 volts coming from the main power out. Factory in should be 38.52. Okay, so the power goes in at 38.52 via the BMS. Let me just get that in there. So yeah, power goes in at 38.52. By the time it runs through the MOSFETs and drops out the other end with the switch turned on, it's 26.71, which is too low for any 36 volt controller to power up because the 36 volt controller has a low voltage cutoff point of around 28.5 volts. Anything below that, the BMS is not going to charge it anyway. Um, but because the BMS input voltage doesn't match the BMS output voltage, 
I can already confirm it's the MOSFETs on the BMS. So that wasn't too bad. What else we got? Let me just check the charge port. 20, yeah, it's the BMS. 26.29. So good news and semi bad news. Good news is battery packs perfectly fine. Um, well savable. Bad news is needs a BMS replaced. They vary in price for between $9.99 up until about $22.99, I believe. Um, I need to know what motor is going on or what, what controller and the BMS amp output needs to match the controller input amps required. Um, apart from that, straight BMS swap out. Um, next day return. Right, I'll send this off to the customer, see what they want to do, take the work from there and get a ship back ASAP. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, there's probably going to be another three coming along later today. It's just I'm a bit run behind.